Hi everyone, this is a demo to show how a developer would use Polish to get some new text translated to the languages needed right after adding them to the code. So here we have a really simple Yoast page that generates some HTML. First, let's add the header of the HTML. To do that, we create a getText.txt macro with the text Hey Sun, which uh, means hello in Swedish. This txt macro will be parsed then and added to the Swedish profile later. Now uh, let's go. Let's add some texts. We are going to add a get text stxt macro with the text midnam are name or yogar age or gammal, which basically means my name is blah blah and I am years old. We use an stxt macro because this text contains two variables that will fill the text, which are name and age, and these uh, these these variables are between dollars in the text. So we specify the value of each variable in the second argument of the stxt macro, just like we are doing right now. So both the names of the variables in the second argument should match uh, those names in the text. So we have name, which is also in the second argument here, and we also have age. So now that we are done with the code, we go to we will go to a shell, and we check the status of our Git uh, repository. And no pull file has been modified yet, as, as can be seen. So uh, now we need to have those uh, two new texts added to the, to the Swedish pull file. To do that, we run make run get text. When this is done, we check the status of our repository, and we see that the Swedish pull file has changed. We do a git diff on on it, and. Uh, we will see that the new two texts have been added. So here we see that Hey Sun has been added and also the, the longer one. And now we need to have these two new texts also in the custom pool files like the English or the Dutch pool file. To do that we are gonna make use of Polish. Uh, so we go to our uh, to the Polish uh, directory that the contains the, the, the Polish repository and we started with the uh, start script and we point to the lang directory of our project. Uh, when starting, a Polish will automatically update all our custom profiles, adding the new keys to them. So we just start Polish, and if we go up a little bit in, in, in here, we see that the Danish profile was updated, the German profile was updated, the English one, and so on. And if we go again to our Git repository and we do a Git status, we see that all the pull files has, has, have changed and we also have some new mm, files that are backups just in case something uh, was was wrong uh, so we can do a, a git diff on the for example the english pull file and we see that we will see that also the, the the two texts have been added but they are still not translated so the current translation is hey son and it should be hello so now this is uh, it's time for the developers to, to for, sorry for the translators to do their work so Polish, after after starting, it prints you uh, an email that you need to send to the translators. And it contains the, the URL of your Polish system, and also a list of the new texts. And it also contains a ticket information field, that, so that you can explain the context of those sentences to the translator, so that they can do a, a, a better translation. So now let's say that you send the email and let's move to the translator role. So now let's think that we are a translator and we would go to um, our browser and we put the uh, URL and we would log in with our OpenID account. This is my OpenID account. We log in and now we will get to the um, Polish um, main page. Here we have, we, select, we say that we are English translator, so we select English here and now we are going to search for the Hey Sun key like this. We press search and here we get the the key which is the Swedish version and the current translation to English which is Hey Sun. So we need to modify this. We need to put hello. So we click here and we write hello. Yep, and we save translation. And that's it. It's really simple. So now we get a notification that our translation has been submitted. And now let's go for the second key, which is uh, mid, nam, ar, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. We search it, we get it, 
and again the translation is not correct so let's let's try to save it but let's let's this time do a mistake in the translation let's say that instead of saying h we're gonna just write a g and this would be a incorrect uh, translation because the variable names don't match and and this won't work on on, on on the live system when actually trying to translate this so polish uh, checks for this and shows you an error message in case um, the, the variable names don't match so now if we fix it and we write AGE and we try to save it hopefully it will work mm -hmm. okay we save yes okay and your translation has been submitted and now the work for the translator is done so he or she just will email the developer back saying okay I'm done with the translations Another developer would go to the Polish shell, and he will get some um, some uh, locks here in the Erlang shell, saying, "Okay, this translator translated this key for the uh, English language, and also the the second one." And to confirm it, uh, the developer would go to the to the Git repository or whatever repository he or she is using, and we can see that two new um, backup files have been created for the English EPU file and now we, we do um, a git diff on the English PU file like that and we're going to see that right now we have the hello uh, translation for his son and also the my name is name and I am blah blah years old so it's really simple and now we can the PU file is ready to be committed so we can add the English profile to our staging area. Git add and number four. And now let's commit it. So yeah, it's up there, exactly, good. Now we can do a git commit. Mm -hmm. And we write a simple comment saying that, okay, the English profile contains the two new uh, texts and they have been translated. Mm -hmm. Two new texts added to the English book file, just like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's about it. So we're done.